When Caesar Augustus began preparations for his invasion of Germania, following the humiliating loss of another pair of eagles to German tribes who ambushed the legions of Marcus Lollius, he not only turned to Marcus Agrippa, who would support the invasion by subduing Pannonia, but also to his stepsons, Tiberius and Drusus. Tiberius would assist Agrippa, driving towards Germania through the Alps, while Drusus would march his legions across the Rhine River and breach Germania's interior. When Drusus left Rome at the end of his 15 BC questorship, in pursuit of his stepfather's agenda, his wife Antonilla accompanied him, along with their firstborn son, who had been named after his uncle Tiberius. Following military action in the Central Alps, which saw him defeat the Raiti tribes, Drusus constructed roads through the mountains as he forged his way towards Germania, eventually regrouping with his brother Tiberius, who had been marching his own legions eastward along the Danuvius River. After their successful defeat of the Vindeliki tribes and their annexation of the kingdom of Noricum, Tiberius marched his forces to Illyricum, where he would support his father-in-law, Marcus Agrippa, while Drusus and Antonilla made their way to Lugdunum. In Lugdunum, Drusus was named Legate of Gaul and endowed with pro-praetorial powers by his stepfather, Caesar Augustus. Making Lugdunum his command base, Drusus established a council of the Gallic provinces called Concilium Galliarum. Each year, a priest was to be selected from the council members. His sacred duty was to organize and celebrate a Gallic festival which venerated the spirits of Rome and of Augustus as deities. Drusus was able to establish this Concilium Galliarum while also overseeing the erection of approximately 50 military bases along the Rhine River as well as the building of a series of canals, all while successfully negotiating a treaty with the Batavi in preparation for his expedition into Germania's interior. In the spring of 12 BC, Drusus left Antonilla, his son, and a newborn daughter in Lugdunum. Crossing the Rhine River with approximately seven legions, he immediately subdued both the Sugambri and the Eusipetes tribes. With Germania's first line of resistance now neutralized, Drusus launched his amphibious campaign. Ships carrying approximately four legions advanced down the Rhine River and into the newly constructed channels, while Drusus negotiated further alliances with the Cananifates and Frisiae tribes, forcing each to pay tribute to Rome, as well as requiring the tribes to contribute both men and military supplies to the invasion efforts. Drusus's naval fleet journeyed through the channels and ultimately entered into the Wadden Sea, where they encountered immediate resistance near the city of Burkana. Defeating the opposition in naval battle, the ships then safely sailed onward to the estuary of the Ems River, where they split into two smaller fleets. Drusus journeyed down the Ems River, while the other half of the fleet hugged the coast, sailing towards the upland on an exploratory mission to reach the Black Sea. But severe weather prevented them from reaching their goal before the end of summer, and they were forced to turn back towards Gaul. Sailing down the Ems River, Drusus disembarked in the Chalcy territory and engaged them in battle. Near the end of the 12 BC campaign season, the Chalcy sued for peace, formally acknowledging the supremacy of Rome. Drusus then sailed further down the Ems before being attacked by a fleet belonging to the Bructeri tribes. Drusus's naval forces defeated the Bructeri ships, but with the campaign season near its end, the forces were unable to continue their progress down the Ems River. Turning his forces around, Drusus led his vessels back towards the Rhine River before the coming winter could find them trapped deep within German territory. During the return journey, Several of Drusus's ships ran aground within the channels, but were rescued by allies from the Frisiae tribes. At the end of the 12 BC year, Drusus returned to Rome with Antonilla, their three-year-old son Tiberius, and their one-year-old daughter, Claudia Livia Julia, called Livilla, in honor of her grandmother Livia Drusilla. As a reward for carrying Rome's eagles into new territory, 
finalizing treaties with new allies, and for navigating the North Sea. Drusus was appointed urban praetor for the 11 BC year, though he only served in the post for a few months. In the spring of 11 BC, Drusus and his family set out once again for the German border. With his focus now on Germania's interior lands, Drusus crossed the Rhine River at the town of Vetera, modern-day Xanten. Still accompanied by his wife and two children, Drusus marched five legions, together with German auxiliary forces, along the Lippe River. Supported by river craft which carried the legions' much-needed supplies, Drusus's forces penetrated approximately 160 miles into German territory, weaving their way into the lands inhabited by the Eusipetes, Marsi, Chugambri, and Cheruski, tribes who had settled there a century earlier following their defeat at the hands of Gaius Marius. At Beckinghausen, Operaden, and Holsterhausen, deep within Germania's interior, Drusus established military bases, as well as a permanent bridge across the Lippe River. Then, while marching towards Weser, Drusus's legions were attacked by the Chatti, who proved themselves ruthless warriors in their attempt to prevent Roman occupation of their homeland. Despite their fierce resistance, Drusus was able to push the Chatti back, continuing towards the Taunus Mountains with minimal Roman losses. Drusus then raised a military camp within the Taunus Mountains as the 11 BC campaign season came to a close. Settling down for the winter, Drusus, his wife and two children, along with his legions, became the first Romans to winter across the Rhine River, hidden within the recesses of German territory. In the spring of 10 BC, Drusus's forces left the Taunus Mountains with the intention of heading back towards the Rhine. Despite his desire to push all the way to the Elbe River, fulfilling the stratagems envisioned by Caesar Augustus, Drusus's wife, Antonilla, was once again with child, likely necessitating her return to Roman territory before the baby was due. With his army in formation, creating a military line which stretched for miles, and with his baggage train well guarded, Drusus's forces began their return trek. Then, as had previously happened to Marcus Lollius, Drusus's legions were ambushed by the Cheruski at the town of Arbalo. With the army strung out in travel formation, the Cheruski quickly gained the upper hand, attempting to destroy the heavily protected yet still vulnerable baggage train. But the Cheruski did not have sufficient numbers to press their advantage as Drusus's forces rallied. The battle was fought to a draw, as both sides retreated. To secure what he had already claimed on behalf of Rome and his stepfather Augustus, Drusus stationed garrisons in Cheruski territory, at Operaden and at Holton, before making for the Rhine River with all haste. Fighting their way through the German forests, the battered and exhausted legions finally made it to the banks of the Rhine. Grateful to their commander for leading them to safety, the legions hailed Drusus as Imperator, with the proclamation of Imperator, Drusus had met all the requirements that had, in previous times, been necessary for the Senate to grant a triumph. But triumphs were a thing of the past, a pre-Augustan Roman tradition. Determined to reach the Elbe River, Drusus parted ways with his pregnant wife and children in Lugdunum and immediately returned to Germania. Near the town of Matium, or modern-day castle within the Taunus Mountains, Drusus's legions ran headlong into a conflict with the Chatti and Sugambri tribes, who had organized an alliance. As the battle raged, Drusus's forces successfully punched through the resistance and made it as far as the Weser River, but the oncoming winter forced the legions to return to Gaul. On August 1st of the 10 BC year, Drusus and Antimilla's third son, Tiberius Claudius Drusus, was born in Lugdunum. Returning to Rome with his family, Drusus, who was only 29 years old, yet much celebrated by the people of Rome, was appointed consul for the 9 BC year, another office he held only for a few months before returning to the German front. Now more determined than ever to reach the Elbe, 
Drusus began a brutal campaign against Germania's tribes, resolutely slashing and burning his way toward his goal. Finally, during the summer of 9 BC, Drusus reached the town of Mogonchakum, and just beyond that, the Elbe River. Hoping to surpass his stepfather's ambitions, Drusus prepared to cross the Elbe River and journey deep into Suebi territory before the oncoming autumn made it necessary for his legions to return to the Rhine River. But something happened which Drusus did not anticipate. The mighty stepson of Caesar Augustus, quickly becoming the bane of Germania, encountered a forest witch, or a ghoul, or a spirit, who spoke to him in his own Latin language. As Drusus cowered before the mysterious shade, she demanded he leave her homeland immediately, and then she warned Drusus that his days were numbered.